Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. Before we get started, I do want to let you know that this program is brought to you by the financial support of our listeners. Thank you so much for your support. And uh, I want to thank uh, Conor so much for uh, sending along the very first uh, one-time contribution of the year. And Carrie becomes our first a uh, new Patreon of 2016, and that at the detective sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support. It's truly appreciated and nice to say because in years past, January has uh, been one of our slow periods uh, for uh, donations. So again, thank you so much for your support. And you can support the show one time basis, support.greatdetectives.net or at patreon.greatdetectives.net. But now it's time for today's episode of Michael Shane. The original air date is July 16th, 1945, and this one is Tire Oriental Lines. The Adventures of Michael Shane, Private Detective. The people who make 76 gasoline and Triton motor oil, Union Oil Company, present The Adventures of Michael Shane, Private Detective, starring Wally Mayer and Kathy Lewis. As a seasoned private detective, Mike Shane is hardly surprised at anything. Puzzled, yes. In fact, this evening, Mike is very puzzled, along with his trim and lovely assistant, Phyllis Knight. Mike's car grinds to a stop near the Presidio, in front of an old brownstone mansion overlooking the Golden Gate. In fact, it is the home of Captain Tyre, shipping magnet. The car door slams. Mike and Phyllis hurry up a flight of stairs. The front door opens before them. Oh, good evening. What do you wish, please? Uh, Mike Shane and Miss Knight to see Captain Tyre, please. Oh, yes, sir. You follow Hop G, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Shane? Hmm? Oh, it is Mr. Shane. Yes, that's right. This is Miss Knight. How do you do? I'm Norma Tyre. I talked to you on the phone. Yes, you were calling for your uncle. We're sorry to be late. I am, too. The captain gets so impatient, you know. Uh, Hop, take Mr. Shane's hat. Oh, yes, Miss. Yeah. Now, they're all waiting in the library. In here, please. Well, Mr. Shane, you did make port at last. At last, sir. I hope Who's I... Who's that? That with you? Your wife? Uh, I'm Mr. Shane's assistant captain, Miss Phyllis Knight. Assistant? Huh. Fine breed of men nowadays. Always got some woman trailing behind them. Uh-huh. A man's world. Ha! Captain Tyre, I... All I'd right, all right. Let's get the introductions over. My brother Milton, general manager of the Tire Oriental Lines. How do you do, Mr. How do you Shane? Do, sir? Mr. Thomas Packer, our secretary treasurer. Glad to know you. How do you do, sir? Mr. Shane, we're sailing in pretty choppy waters. That's why we're signing you on. Yes, I gathered that much, sir. As you know, sir, from the days of wind jammers, the Tire Oriental Lines has run the finest and fastest packet ships to China and India. We've had plenty of competition, but our line is still fastest and finest. You've always had beautiful ships, Captain. I've watched them sail out the Golden Gate many a time, wished I was aboard. Yes, maybe one of them you watched was the SS Java. It's a picture of her over the bookcase there. But you saw her only once. Hey, that's right. She went down on her maiden voyage, didn't she, several years ago? Yes, struck a reef off Hong Kong on the uh, Singapore run. My brother was a captain. Oh? Not Milton here. My other brother, Norman. Uh, my father. He and mother went down with the ship. Oh, I... Board of Inquiry looked into it, of course. My brother Norman was dead, so he couldn't testify. Mr. Graves was first officer, and Mr. Graves was on the bridge when they hit that reef. He cleared himself with a Board of Inquiry, but I have never been satisfied, and he's never held another berth with our company. And he hasn't done very well with other lines, according to what Graves writes to the paper. I uh, don't understand. Well, I'll show you. 
We've got newspaper clippings here of letters he's had published each year on the anniversary date of the sinking of the Java. It's been going on for years now. In every letter, he claims that the Java was poorly built, that we made a goat out of him, and now no other line will give him a berth. He says we've ruined his career. <laughs> you see, Mr. Shane, next Thursday will be another anniversary of the loss of the Java. And we understand Mr. Graves is going to send another letter to the newspaper. And the following week, we launch our newest ship, the SS India. We're an old and respected line, Mr. Shane. I don't intend that we have any cloud hanging over that launching. I've had enough of Mr. Graves' bladder. I won't have any more of it. No more, do you hear? Captain, how do you know he's going to write another letter? He telephoned the captain and said so. We think he's being paid by some other ship line to embarrass us. We want you to find out the facts. Isn't it possible that he just has a persecution complex? Has brooded over the affair too much? I doubt it. I doubt it. And if he's taking money to scuttle our line, I'll attend to that gentleman myself. I've handled his breed before. Uh, no, no, I'll do as I captain. please. Oh. Who's in command here? Do I have to settle that again? Now, Captain, you've got to watch yourself. I never saw such a crew of old women. Captain Tyre, I haven't taken this case yet. And if I do, it must be on one condition. What's that? If we find that Graves is guilty as you suspect, the matter must be turned over to the police. You're not to settle it yourself. We agree to that, Mr. Shane. I want Captain Tyre's statement, please, sir. Well, it's better than he deserves. All right. Good. Good. Now, uh... Can any of you tell me where I'll find this Mr. Graves? I may want to talk to him. The last we heard, he was staying at some apartment on uh, Clay Street, a place that caters to old sailors. Well, that's good enough. You better get on it tonight, sir. I'll check back as soon as I have something, sir. Uh, glad to have met all of you. I'll see you to the door. Thank you. Mr. Shane, I... Uh, may I ask, uh, what will be your first step... Well, we'll probably drop by police headquarters to see if they have any record on Graves. Then we'll check his friends and acquaintances to see if he's spending money be, oh, beyond his means. Oh. Miss, uh, your hat, please. Oh, 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 thank you, thank you. Good night, Mr. Shane. Miss Knight, good, good night. night. Angel, what's the matter? You were so particularly quiet in there. Oh, you noticed. Well, I spent most of my time reading a note and wondering what was in the wind. Mm. When Norma shook hands with me, she pressed a note into my palm. Wait a minute, here's what it says. Mr. Shane, I've got to see you. Your apartment, 10 o'clock, tonight. That's about the whole story, Inspector. Mm -hmm. Phil and I are checking up on this first mate, uh, Lee Graves. We thought you might have some record on him, Inspector, if he's ever been in trouble with the police. Well, not here in Homicide, Phil. Oh. oh, of course not, but your general fingerprint file might show something. It might. Sergeant. Yes, sir? Take a look at the fingerprint cards. You got the name? Lee Graves, right away, sir. Well, kids, I'd say you were going in for exotic stuff. Tire Oriental Line, the ship sinking in the China Sea. Mm -hmm. If you want color, Inspector, you ought to see the old captain. He's yes. saltier than the briny itself. Yes, <laughs> sir. He could bite an anchor chain in two. And his niece. Um, why does she want to talk to you in your apartment, Mike? I don't know, but I'm really looking forward to it, Angel. Indeed. Inspector. Well, that's past no. work, Sergeant. Find anything? I haven't looked, sir. I'm afraid I've got bad news. Yes? You'll really need Graves' fingerprints now. A few minutes ago, Captain Tyre was murdered. We'll rejoin Mike Shane and his adventures in just a moment. Friends, if your car has a habit of playing the anvil chorus every time you take a hill or step on the gas, perhaps you're using the wrong motor oil. Now, that statement may sound odd to you, so maybe we'd better explain. You see, most drivers recognize carbon knocking and pinging when they hear it. But very few know that nearly all carbon formed in engines comes from the lubricating oil and not from the gasoline. However, and this is the payoff, Motor oils differ widely in the amount of carbon they will form. That's why we say your carbon troubles may be due to the brand of lubricating oil you buy. Because, and this is a proved laboratory fact, 
Triton motor oil forms less carbon than any of the seven leading premium oils sold in the West. Yes, that's right. Triton cuts down carbon. The secret of Triton's superiority lies in Union Oil Company's exclusive propane solvent refining process. That means all harmful asphalts, waxes, and sulfur have been removed, leaving a pure 100% paraffin-based motor oil, an oil that will furnish hundreds of miles of safe, dependable lubrication. You can buy Triton motor oil at all Union Oil Minuteman stations. Just look for the sign of the big orange and blue 76. Thank you. The president of the Tyre Oriental Ship Lines has been murdered. In the private study of Captain Tyre, Mike, Phyllis, and the inspector examine the body slumped over the desk. The inspector turns to the captain's brother. Has anyone touched this body? No one, inspector. And who found him? I did. All right, give the sergeant your name. And now tell us what you know. Thomas Packer, secretary treasurer of the company. About ten minutes after Mr. Shane left the house, somebody rang the doorbell. Hop G let him in and Mm -hmm. took him to the captain's study. I asked Hop who it was. He said a Mr. Graves. The captain and Graves were alone in the study? Yes. Norma, Milton, and I were in the living room. I got uneasy about Graves and came and knocked on the door there. When I got no answer, I walked in. The captain was just as you see him. Yes, at the first we thought he fainted until we saw the blood. And this man Graves? Boy, he disappeared. Uh, we found that veranda door open over there. It's the only way he could have left. Mm-hmm. Sergeant, I guess we shake out the dragnet for Mr. Graves. Mike, where I'm standing, I can see something white under the body. Just the edge of it. Where? Here, see? Under his chest on the desk. I think it's a paper of some sort. Yeah, I see it too, Phil. I'll raise him up a bit, Mike. Look, look, there's what killed him, his own paper knife. Yeah, right into the heart. What? Inspector. Yeah, Mike? This paper underneath him, it's a note for us. To whom it may concern. My suicide may appear the act of uh, an insane man. It is not. There are reasons. My family knows these reasons very well. Oh, Captain good, Tyre. Good suicide. Hey, let me see that, Mike. There are reasons. My family knows the reasons very well. I'm sure we do not. Why, I haven't the slightest idea what Captain meant. How about you, Patrick? Well, I'm not in the family, but it it stumps me. We were talking to the captain less than an hour ago, and he certainly didn't strike me as being in a suicidal frame of mind. No, I can't imagine a proud old sea captain killing himself a week before he launches a new ship. He was afraid of bad publicity from Lee Graves. I don't know what could be worse than the president of the line committing suicide. You people are satisfied that this is the captain's handwriting? Yes, it's the captain's. There's no question. The angle of that knife into his chest. Uh, was uh, was the captain right or left-handed? Right-handed. Uh-huh, that checks. Look, if you people don't mind, we'd like to make some diagrams, routine stuff, you know. We'd like to have the room to ourselves for a while, if you don't oh, mind. Of course. We'll yeah. wait in the living room. All right, Mike. What do you want to tell me? Take another look at that suicide note, Inspector. It was not written at this desk. How do you know? Simple. The desk has a glass top, but the back of the note paper shows it was written on a soft surface. Uh-huh. And see, the pen, the pen flooded once, the ink soaked through, and some green fuzz stuck to the other side. Fuzz from a green blotting pad. Well, Mike, maybe the captain wrote the note somewhere else and then brought it in here. Sure, a lot of suicides write their farewells and carry them around in their pockets for days even. This paper is fresh, Inspector. It hasn't even got a crease in it. Now, you can talk from now till breakfast, and I say Captain Tyre was too rugged a number for suicide. Even his family can't explain it. All right, suppose it is murder. The next thing Yes, is... the same question every inspector in D.A. asks. What, what is, is the, the motive? motive? Sure, and another thing. If Lee Graves killed the captain, how did he force him to write this note? There's no sign of a struggle. Well, let's stop asking questions and find out. Sergeant, there may be some good fingerprints on that knife. I'll check it right away, sir. Mike, hmm? a stick-to-phone here. There's a cylinder on it. Well, can you tell if it's been used? Yeah. The wax has a few grooves cut in it. Okay, it's worth a try. Play it back to us. All right. Packer, where are those blasted maritime phones for the SS China? Packer, how many times have I got to tell you to get hold of Crowder? I want my will changed. Give him those notes I dictated at the office. That's all there is, Mike. Sergeant, never mind that knife. Bring Mr. Packer in here. Yes, sir. 
So the captain was worried about his will. Well, that might bear out suicide if he was tidying up affairs before his death. It might mean a number of things. Uh, yeah. You want me, Inspector? Yes, Mr. Packer. Did Captain Ty have an attorney by the name of Crowder? Why, yes. And did Crowder make the changes in the captain's will? How did... No, he, he didn't. Didn't you get hold of Crowder? You were to give him some notes. Uh, no, I didn't give him the notes. Why not? Well, the captain's brother and Norma told me not to. It would mean the control of the company would go to a board of governors. I see. That's all, Mr. Packer. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, I'd like to ask a favor, Inspector. Yes? The captain's death is a great shock to all of us, uh, but the business must go on. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do at the office tonight. Must all three of you go? Yes, sir. We have an $8 million ship to launch next week. Very well. The sergeant will tell the men outside to let you pass. Yes, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. Well, Inspector, you wanted a motive. You've got two of them. A discharged first mate with a grudge against the captain. Mm -hmm. A brother and a niece who now control the company due to the captain's very timely death. Great <laughs> some law and order. It's the inspector, the sergeant, and my chief. Hello. Who's the lady with you? Hi, Manny. We're looking for one of your customers, uh, Lee Graves. Oh. Skipper Graves? Yeah. yeah, he was here a little while ago. I swept him out. <laughs> he was drunk? Oh, no more than usual. I just got tired of hearing him carve up Captain Tyre. That's so. What did he say? Oh, you know the skipper. Wait till he gets his hands on Captain Tyre. He'll string him up the yard arm, bash his head in with a belaying pin. Keel haul, the old barnacle. <laughs> Bloodthirsty cuss, huh? Don't worry, lady. He's been talking like that for years. He's killed Captain Tyre 917 ways. Yes, sir. Double scotch, come on. What's the matter with you kids? You heard what the bartender said. You treated as casually as yeah, if the sure, man hadn't sure. even... sure, Graves is too loose-tongued. Well... If he planned to kill the captain, he wouldn't advertise it to Joe Dokes and his yellow pup. It works both ways, Mike. If Graves hopped on the idea long enough and then got into a fight with the captain, he might find himself carrying out the urge. Sergeant, call headquarters. I want Lee Graves in custody before midnight. <laughs> Buddy, please, hop, Gino, Savi. The bedrooms, hop, bedrooms. We want you to show us which room is Miss Norma's and which is Mr. Tyre's. Oh, but everybody out now. They'll go office. All right, we'll go find them ourselves. Well, hop, you take you. They're upstairs. Please. Hold on. This is Lom, Captain's blather. Do you, you see anything, Mike? No. No, not in this room. Okay, we'll try Norma's room. Where is it, Hop? Oh, Missy Norma? Yeah. Uh, it's the next one. This door. There you are, Mike, over by the window. Aha, uh -huh, a writing desk. And it's got a green blotter on it. Well, it doesn't absolutely prove the suicide note was written here. Mm. Find mm. some writing on the blotter, Mike? Yeah. Can you read it? Wait a minute. It's mostly blur. Um... To whom it may concern, my family knows... A suicide note. It was written on Norma's desk. Yes. And I'm wondering just what Miss Norma plans to tell me at 10 o'clock in my apartment. If she has the courage to go through with it. You mean if she even shows up. Well, Miss Tyre, you must have been waiting outside for the clock to strike ten. Hardly. I told him at the office I was going out for some supper. Let me take your coat, Miss Tyre. Oh. Oh, hello. Uh, no, I can't stay long. I uh, like your apartment, Mr. Shane. What the captain would have called a trim berth. Mm -hmm. I suppose you recognize those docks just off there to your right? The Tyre Oriental Lines. My father lived his whole life on those ships. He died with one. God had made me a man, that's where I should belong, on the bridge. There's no feeling like it. Twelve thousand tons of steel alive and straining beneath you. Completely at your command and the lives of all aboard. It means power and mastery. Uh, Miss Tyre, in that note of yours, you said uh, you had to see me. Uh, yes, Mr. Shane. The past year or so, I've been watching Tom Packer. He's grown to think that he runs the company. 
When the captain and Milton took that trip to Australia last March, he darn well did run it. But the captain took over again, didn't he? Yes, but Packer had tasted power. It seemed to me, Mr. Shane, that there might be a connection between him and Lee Graves. Hmm? Packer might be paying Graves to embarrass the Tyre family with those letters to the newspapers. Then at the proper moment, Packer would move in. Well, that's what I wanted to tell you. Oh, but that would hardly cause the captain to commit suicide. Or do you think Packer and Graves cooked up a murder deal between them? Well, Tom Packer found the body. Body? I've got to go. I shouldn't be away from the office too long. Oh, you won't say anything about this, Mr. Shane. Oh, of course not. Uh, good night. Good night, Miss Tyre. Good night. <sighs> well, honey? Yes, yes, a very big well. Mr. Packer says Norma and Uncle Milton want control of the company. They blocked the captain, captain's attempt to change his will. And now Norma throws it right back into Packer's lap. But the suicide note was written on Norma's desk. No, oh, that's a gruesome killing for a woman. Oh, don't make that mistake, honey. We've got to look at her as a person who, for power and mastery, could murder Captain Tyre. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll return to Mike Shane and Phyllis Knight in their adventures. Friends, your automobile radiator needs more attention than it gets by just filling it with water now and then. For the cores and water pipes of a radiator are smaller in diameter than the thickness of a lead pencil. That means it doesn't take much in the way of rust, grease, and scale accumulations to block the easy flow of the radiator water. And sluggish water circulation is hard on gas coupons because overheated motors waste gasoline. That's why it's a good idea to drop in at a Union Oil station and ask the Minuteman to clean out your radiator with Union Radiator Flush. This service takes but a few minutes and works like magic. Union Radiator Flush is harmless to metal, but its special solvent action cuts scale, rust, and grease right out of choked radiator cores and water lines. Then, when the Minuteman fills your radiator with fresh, clean water, you can be sure it can really circulate with a fast, steady flow. So for cooler driving, economical mileage, just drive in wherever you see the sign of the big orange and blue 76 and ask for Union Oil Radiator Service. Thank you. Mike and Phyllis have had their meeting with the murdered man's niece. They have rejoined the inspector at Captain Tyre's home. The inspector paces the floor thoughtfully. Assuming, Mike, that everything Norma told you is true, we still haven't turned up a bit of proof. Correct, Inspector. If Mr. Packer is working with Graves, he isn't going to admit it. And we haven't got a hold of Graves. What's more important, Mike? The captain wrote that blame suicide note. The DA can't indict anybody with that thing dangling in front of his nose. Ah, the inspector's right. We've got murder motives for everybody and no proof that it's even murder. But it's got to be. We haven't found anything that shows the old captain planned a suicide. Admitted. There isn't even a suggestion in his diary that anything was wrong. His diary? Huh? A man keeping a diary? Yeah, Phil. I found it up on that bookshelf while you two were talking with Norma. The captain's log, he called it. Well, where is it now? On the desk. Mm-hmm. The handwriting matches this suicide note, okay? Last entry was yesterday. Yeah. Mostly ship sailings and cargoes. Wait. There's a blank stretch in there. Yeah, I noticed it. February this year. Captain starts writing again on March 3rd. Yeah, it's just hand scratches. I can't even read it. But you'll notice on March 5th, the handwriting goes normal again. Uh-huh. Anybody can read it. Four days ago, four days out of San Francisco... That must have been on his trip to Australia. I checked through the whole diary, Mike. It doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah, perhaps it will, Inspector. Honey, how about ringing for Hop Chief, please? Shall do. Don't you see, Inspector? The captain was a careful, methodical man. Every page is full of details about the, the ship line, except for the month of February. A complete blank. What 
happened in February. I'll have your job for this. Let go of me. Here, here, what goes on? We finally got Graves, Inspector. A lot of good it'll do you, you confounded landlubbers. We picked him up trying to cross the Bay Bridge. All right, Graves, I guess you know what you're here for. I do. If you think you can frame me again like Captain Tyre did with that sinking Mr. Light. Graves, you came here to see uh, the captain tonight? I did. To show him the next letter I'm going to mail to the papers unless I get my old berth back. I'm going to ruin my reputation to get away with it. We're talking about murder, Mr. Graves. And you want to blame it on me. Captain was dead when I came in. Yeah? Then why didn't you stick around? Because, because I, I lost my head. I've been blowing around what I do to the captain. I walk in tonight, and there he is dead. So I cut out through the window. Mike, there's hmm? Hop G in the doorway. Huh? Oh, yes. Oh, Inspector, will you hold it for a minute, Mike? Oh, this is same man Hop G see before. He killed my captain. Yes, yes, now, same man, Hop. But look, uh, you see the captain's log here? Yes, sir. All right. The captain didn't write anything in it from February 6th to March 3rd of this year. Now, do you know why, Hop? Oh, captain sick. Go away. He have stroke. Stroke. Stroke? No. Paralysis? Doctor say stroke. Captain, no move leg, no move your arm. Which leg? Which arm? Oh, this one. Of course. Oh. That's it, isn't it? That's it, Inspector. Hey, Sergeant. You're going to pick up three more people at the office of the Tire Oriental Lines. Well, we're certainly glad you men caught Graves. Has he confessed? No, Mr. Tire. Graves did not kill your brother. Oh? Then it was suicide after all. Again, no. It was not suicide. It was murder. And you three people knew it was murder. Why didn't you tell us the captain was once paralyzed? The captain was a proud old man. He made us keep it secret. He didn't want it to get out among the stockholders or to our competitors. That was all right while the captain was alive, but not when he's dead. You wanted us to think it was suicide. You forget, Inspector. We called you because we did think it was murder. Then when you found that suicide note, it uh, changed things. It most certainly did not, Mr. Packer. You knew the captain couldn't possibly write that note or plunge the knife into his heart. All right. Let me put it this way. The captain's suicide will hurt the company, but his murder would hurt even more. I knew it was murder. I suspected Norma or Milton. Well, and we suspected you. So all three of you kept still, hoping we'd decide it was suicide and accuse Lee Graves. That one of you three murdered the captain. You can't prove that. Very easily, Miss Tyre. By your answer to just one single question. Where were you during the month of March this year? Why, I... Right here in San Francisco. You were here with her, uh, Mr. Packer? Yes, I was. She represented her family while Milton took the captain on a trip to Australia. The doctor said a sea voyage would help him. Mm -hmm. The captain had a stroke in February. He, uh, he couldn't write it in his diary, but uh, once he began his sea voyage, he felt better. On March 3rd, he tried to write in his diary using his left hand. The writing was impossible to read. But on the next day, there's an entry which is perfectly normal. It's a very good imitation of the captain's writing. In fact, it's the same writing on the suicide note. Oh, no. No. Oh, yes, Norma. Oh. The truth has to be told. You all knew somebody else wrote the uh, captain's diary for him. The only person who was with him on that voyage is Brother Milton. What? That doesn't say I murdered him. Captain asked me to write the suicide note for him. He killed himself. You're getting desperate, Mr. Tyre. If your brother couldn't write that note because of a paralyzed arm, he couldn't plunge a knife into his heart. Oh, no. Oh, no. You'll need a better story than that, Mr. Tyre. Especially for a jury. You know, kids, this was a strange case. Huh? Mr. Packer and Norma must have been protecting Milton Tyre from the very start. Sure, sure. They knew he signed all the captain's papers for him. The old fellow was too proud to let people know he was ailing. And they protected Brother Milton because they were glad to have the captain out of the way before he changed his will. And they lost their power in the company. Mm-hmm. A very tight little group. You know, there's one thing that puzzled me about you, Mike. Mm -hmm. You're the one who discovered the suicide note was written on Norma's desk. Yet you never accused her. Inspector, you should know Mike by now. A woman with a trim ankle is never a killer to Mr. Shane. Oh, now, now, Angel. 
Why, I knew from the start she couldn't be guilty. Oh, oh, you did? Sure, sure. You and I both saw her before the killing. We both saw her afterwards. Both times she was wearing the same white blouse with long, frilly cuffs on the sleeves. She couldn't possibly have stabbed the captain without uh, getting blood on those sleeves. You see, Phil, he does notice what a woman wears. Uh-huh, uh-huh. uh-huh. I've noticed that he notices... Trouble is, Inspector, it's always the wrong woman. Tune in again next week at 8 o'clock for another adventure with Michael Shane, Private Detective, starring Wally Mayer and Kathy Lewis, with Joe Forte as the inspector. Tonight's story was written by Richard DeGraff and based on the character created by Brett Halliday. Music was composed and directed by Bernard Katz. This is John Lang saying goodnight for the people who make 76 gasoline and Triton Motor Oil. Union Oil Company. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. Hi, this is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site. We stream live OTR Westerns 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, along with putting out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old-Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. Well, some fun characters around this. The sea captain. I also like the niece. Uh, very interesting way that this uh, played out. Though I have to say at this point, it looks like hiring Michael Shane is practically asking to get killed. And I guess there is a reason that uh, Faraday is so helpful. You know, essentially giving Michael, uh, you know, any information he wants. Because he's going to need it for the homicide investigation sure to follow. Uh, but at any rate, that will actually do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for The Avenger. In the meanwhile, send your